A potato sack. Why a potato sack? Because it was made out of wool. And that wool would keep you warm in the midst of the winter. Because in Baltimore, it snowed. In Baltimore, it rained. In Baltimore, the temperature dropped sometimes down to 19 degrees. So we got cold. And me as a little kid, what I would do, I would cuddle up with my family to keep the warmth from their bodies to my body. Food. No, we didn't have the kind of food that you all eat. I know y'all feast on steaks and potatoes and broccoli and all that good stuff. Our food, our food was meal. We didn't have the plates and the forks and what have you that you all are privileged to have. We had our fingers that we would scoop up. That's how we would scoop our food up, with our fingers. Oh, yeah. Well, one night while I was covered up with my family, I heard this screeching sound. And it woke me. It frightened me. That screeching sound was no other than my Aunt Hester. My Aunt Hester was being whipped. Yes. Captain Anthony had my aunt tied up as such. And when I heard the noise, I ran around because I wanted to see what the noise was. So I got behind a, a brick, a, a wall, and I looked. And as he was whipping her with that whip, he was saying, you're mine. Don't ever let me catch you with anybody else. The somebody else that he was talking about was Ned. Ned was a slave from another plantation. My aunt and Ned was seeing each other. But Captain Ern was seeing my aunt. And he whipped her for seeing Ned. And I'll let you know that was the first taste, that was my first taste of slavery. Well, as time moved on and as it would have it, Captain Aaron Anthony had a daughter, Lucretia. Now, Miss Lucretia she did not know one thing. And you know what that one thing she didn't know? She didn't know that I was her little brother. She didn't know that. Well, when Captain Anthony died, we fell into the uh, uh, arms of, if I could use that term, of Miss, Miss Lucretia. So Miss Lucretia came to me one day and she said, Frederick, which I need to tell you, Frederick, you're taking a bath. Now just imagine, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me back up a little bit. From the age of one to the age of seven, eight, or nine years old, my bath. Now, now, Pastor, Pastor, thank you very much. But can I ask the people a question, please? You're excluded, because I know you. Well, well, you're excluded. Sister, you're excluded. Mother, you're, you're excluded. My sister, you're excluded. My sister, you're excluded. But I got to ask this question. Hallelujah. Who in here take baths in a bathtub? Huh? Who in here take baths in a bathtub? Huh? All right? Some of y'all are sophisticated because I know some of y'all take showers. Hallelujah. Well, our bath was in the pond. Our bath was in the pond where the cows, the horses, and where the women would go down to wash their clothes, where everybody conjugated at, that's where we took our baths. So we really, ma'am, we really wasn't clean. But when Miss Lucretia came and she said, Frederick, Augustus, Washington, Bailey, you're going to take a bath. And she allowed me to go up into the big house. And I went upstairs in that bathroom. And I saw that fresh, clean water. And I got in that tub. I stayed in that tub for four hours almost. Because I was having a ball. I was splashing and everything. And all of a sudden, from afar, I heard Miss Lucretia, Frederick, get out of that water. Yes, ma'am. I get out that water. I get out that water. And when I got out that water, she came up and she dressed me. She put me on a nice white shirt that I never had on, a pair of pants, and a brand new pair of shoes. Now, I must tell you that the shoes that she bought me 
When I put my foot in those shoes, they were hurt. How many of you all ever had a new pair of shoes that hurt? And when you walk, they hurt even more. But see, even though you all are saying, yes, yes, hallelujah, I've been there, but you've never been there with, with the type of situation I've been. Because when I put my feet in them shoes, my feet hurt so bad because of the fact that I had cracks on the bottom of my feet. The cracks were so deep that you could actually take a pin and put it in, put it up in my feet. So you imagine squeezing my feet in those nice looking shoes, how much pain it was. Well, as we went off, they took us on over to the to our, our Mr. Lucretia R. Miss Sophia and her husband, Hugh R. When we got up to the door, and I looked over at the door of this big house, you know who I saw staring at us? I saw Miss Sophia, I saw Master Hugh R., and I saw little Tommy. Now, I thought something was wrong with Miss Sophia, because Miss Sophia, she was cheesing. All I saw was those big white teeth and the cheeks and the eyes. And as I got off that car to go towards that house, because I got to let you know now, back then, you couldn't look a white person in the eye. You had to drop your head. So as I walked up, I got my head down. Miss Sophia, she in the middle, I can see her. She in the middle, and she said, Frederick, Frederick. I knew something, Pastor. I knew something was wrong with that lady. She trying to get me a whipping. She said, Frederick, look at me, look at me. And I'm thinking, I'm like, no, I ain't going to look at that lady. That lady ain't going to whip me. So as I got up to her, she took a palm and she put it up under my cheek, under my chin, and she lift my head up. And when she lift my head up, I came up just like this. Now I can smell her right in my face. And she said, Frederick, open your eyes. I said, no, I am. I said to myself, no, I am not opening my eyes because she just want to whip me. So she said, Frederick, open up your eyes. So when I went to open up my eyes, I went just like this. And when I looked, those big blue eyes were right there. Those red cheeks were right there. And that big old smile with those gigantic white teeth were right there. And she said, Frederick, welcome home. And I said, oh boy, she crazy. So she put her arms around me and she took me in. And Master Hugh said, now Frederick, you're here to take care of Tommy. You understand me? I said, yes, Master. And little Tommy was standing over there looking at me. He ain't say nothing. He was just standing there looking at me. So anyway, as time went on, all right, Miss Sophia, she couldn't read. She had trouble reading. So you know what she used to do? She used to invite me to come and sit on the couch. Yeah. This little slave boy, she invited me to come sit on the couch. So I go sit on the couch. Let me, can I hold that chair right there? Because I got to show y'all what I do when I sit on the couch. That's right. She let me sit on the couch. And then, uh, thank you. So, first I would go want to sit on the floor, but she said, no, sit on the couch. So I sit on the couch, and we be doing A, B, C. And it'd be A, B, C. And all of a sudden, one day we were doing A, B, C. A, B, C. And all of a sudden the door opened up, and I heard this. And it was Master Hugh Ard, and he said, Miss Sophia, you better not be over there teaching them, them, them slave boys how to read. You teach them how to read, they're going to want to take over. And she looked over at him and said, but Hugh, I didn't know I couldn't do that. And he said, well, don't do it again. You understand? Yes, Hugh, I'll never do it again. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I look. And then he comes storming over to me. And when he came over to me, quite naturally, he was standing there. I dropped my head. And he said, Frederick, you're not here to read. Don't never let me catch you read. I catch you reading again, I'm going to whip you. You hear me? I said, yes, master. Eyes never read. Reading no good. Reading bad for us. That's right. Well, I have you all know that guess what? While he was telling me I couldn't read, in my mind, I was saying, I'm going to get my hands on any little thing I can get my hands on to read. Because that must be something for them to tell me don't read. Well, as time went on, Tommy went to school. Tommy came home from school with books. Tommy would go up to his room with his books. 
And when everybody left the house, guess where I would go? Tommy's room. I go up to Tommy's room. <laughs> was I up there cleaning his room? No. No, I wasn't. What was I doing up there? Reading. I was reading. Yeah. And Tommy also had what was called a cursor. Anybody know what a cursor is? Someone who cursed. That helps you write. And cur what is a cursor? Um, a cursor lets you write. Yay! Give him a hand. Yay. That's right. It's a cursor that you write with. So when Tom, when everybody would leave, I go up and I start reading, trying to write my name in cursor. Well, one day when I came up there, I was up there. I heard the door. So you know what I did? I fastly put everything back. And I put Tommy's books back just like they were. If they were like that, I put them back like that. If they were like that, I put them back like that. Even if they were standing on their head, I put it back on their head. That's right. Well, I ran to the stairwell. When I got to the stairwell and I looked down with Master Hugh R. You know what he said? You know what Master said? You know what he said? What? He said, Frederick, give a hand. That's right. Frederick, what are you doing up there? I said, I was doing nothing. I was cleaning the room, Master. You were not up there reading, are you? I said, no, Master. Reading bad for you. I was not read because I was not going to get a whipping, Master. He said, all right, now get down here. So I ran downstairs. Well, guess what? Everybody repeat after me. What goes in? What goes in? Comes out. Comes out. So what goes in? What goes in? What goes in? Comes out. Comes out. Well, they kind of figured, Matt, pa uh, Pastor. You know what they started figuring? They started figuring that little Frederick was doing something illegal. That's right. You know what they were figuring I was doing it illegal? Reading. I was reading. That's right. You know why they figured that? Because I started speaking with those long words I was reading. They were just slipping off the tip of my tongue. That's right. Well, they sent me to the store, too. They used to send me to the store. Did I tell y'all that? They used to send me to the store, and guess what? When they sent me to the store, Pastor, you know what they did? They paid me. They paid me money to go to the store. Anybody want to guess how much money they paid me to go to the store? You, you must have been right there with me, huh? Because they paid me a penny. Give, give, give First Lady a hand. That's right. They paid me a penny. And you know what else I used to do before I leave the house? I would go to the kitchen. Now, anybody want to guess what I would go to the kitchen for? Eat. No, I wouldn't go there to eat. No, i go there and get some bread. I just said. That's right. No. Pastor, he just said, I just said that. But I told him I went, he said, eat. And then I came back and said, I went to the, to the kitchen to get some bread. He said, I just said that. But wait a minute, can I throw a curveball since baseball coming up? You're right. I went there and got some bread, but I didn't eat the bread. I took the bread and I broke it all up in pieces and I put it in my pocket. And then I went off. Now, wait a minute. Just for the sake of the kids that's in here. Ma'am, you know how I like to do it. Just for the sake of them, I had the, the bread in my pocket. And I went on to the store, but I didn't walk to the store. Ma'am, you know what I did? I skipped to the store. That's right, all the way to the store. And when I got to the store, there were some little white boys there. And guess what those white boys had that I wanted? Candy. Candy. No. Money. The bread. Money. No, they were hungry. I was hungry, they was hungry. But what was I hungry for? Knowledge. Knowledge. What did they have? Knowledge. Knowledge. So you know what I would do? When I go up to them, I would trade them. I would trade them. I give them bread for their knowledge because they were hungry and I was hungry. Now, sometimes what I would do, I would test them. Now, see, somebody in here spelled the word hack. Hey, hey, hey. You sure that's how you spell it? All right. Well, what I would tell them, I say spell hat, and they would go H A T. And I'm like, that ain't the way you spell it. You don't spell it. I didn't know how to spell it, but I say that ain't the way you spell it. So you know what I have them to do again, ma'am? I have them to spell it again, H A T. And this time, when they spell it the second time, guess what it did in my mind? It registered. Yes. So I give them some bread, and that's how I began to learn how to learn. So that penny that Master Number was paying me, I saved that penny up to buy my first book. And that first book was the Colombian Orator. 
Uh-uh. Pastor, you uh-uh. saying something up here. You said when you come here to no. Mount Carmel Church, this is your no. what? No. You said earlier, Mount Carmel uh, Baptist Church is no. your what? No. Uh-huh. Home. Home. And you love it. And Jesus got you here, right? All right. Well, guess what? That Colombian order paper, it was my food and it was my drink. That's right. I studied everything in that book. Now, the book was not a regular book. It was just a book of speeches. Speeches from people like Thomas Jefferson. Anybody ever heard of that guy? Yeah. Huh? George Washington. Anybody ever heard of him? Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, 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 ma'am, ma'am, George Washington was our what president? What number? Oh, girl, look at here. Give her a round of applause. You know what, uh, uh, ma'am? That's your granddaughter. Uh-huh. When you get grown, you're going to be a teacher and I'm going to be your student. And I'm going I'm to I'm go all the way to being a child again. And I'm going to be your, teach, your, your student, okay? Uh-huh. All right? <laughs> anyway, anyway, as time moved on, because they knew I was getting a little smart for myself and I was getting a little older. So by the time I got 14, 15 years old, they moved me. They moved me to another plantation. This plantation was, was run by a very mean master, Master Corvée. Now, Master Corvée, he was, he was known as a slave breaker. Now, let me ask you something. When horses who are wild, they call them wild stallions, what do they do with them to tame them? Break them. They break them. Well, they sent me to Master Corvée to break me. And believe it or not, when I first got there, Master didn't come up to me and say, hey, Frederick, how you doing? He came up to me, and the first thing he did, he whipped me. He whipped me. When I walked away, I was walking like this. Six months later, I was walking like this. Because he had whipped me. He had broke this stallion. That's right. And you know what, son? There were times that I would go out to the Chesapeake, and I would watch the water just flow. And I say, Lord, I wish I could be free like this water. I wish I could flow like this water back and forth and do what I want to do to be free. But guess what? You ready for this? I was not free. And Master would beat me every chance he would get. Well, one day, we were out fanning the mill. 